so to start, I would like to probably share my vision of the future first. Um, I believe we are leaping into an era of a brave new, brave new cyber physical world, uh, where we get joint taxis and we have um, 3D printed uh, organs that can be transplanted in the body. Um, so later on in this section, we actually have another work on how to protect the 3D printed organs. Um, and as everybody expected, right, uh, because the connection with the physical world, any attacks on CPS system actually can have very serious physical world consequences or kinetic effects. <clears throat> so with that in mind, about four years ago, <laughs> we start thinking about, uh, geez, how do we protect this type of physical world interacting systems, right? Um, that lead us to uh, two research, two key research questions, or, or two key questions that we don't have answer to. One, um, what is the property that is necessary to argue cyber physical system is indeed secure or safe? Right. Second, what's the mechanism to verify that none of those key properties are violated? So, um, well, once you think about verification, automatically you turn your, you, you, you turn your attention to something called the remote attestation, right? Uh, just, you know, attestation 101, um, generally uh, the verifier, you know, maybe the command center, so using the delivery zone as the running case here, um, the <coughs> control center will send a request, most likely cryptographically signed, and say, Hey, John, can you tell me, can you show me the proof that everything actually worked uh, as expected, right? The John go off and measure a whole bunch of things, for example, can be code integrity, can be, um, you know, all the control flow it experienced and comes back with a cryptographically signed report, then the verifier verifies it. <clears throat> so given that mechanism in mind, well, the, the next question is uh, that we have to solve is uh, what property should we measure, right? Um, so existing literature mostly focus on um, code integrity, uh, control flow integrity, data flow integrity. Those are common uh, computer program properties that we hope to preserve. For real-time cyber physical systems such as Jones, um, there are additional unique attributes that have to be attested. Um, the first one we targeted was the temporal behavior. Um, so to give an example why temporal behavior is important, think about a self-driving car going down the road, detects a pedestrian. Um, well, it recognized the person correctly, but unfortunately, five seconds later, um, you know, that is no good. I mean, it's as bad as not detecting the person, right? <clears throat> so we are hoping that uh, um, the, the, the attestation also verifies the timing behavior. Also, um, different than IoT attestation, where you know, we send a command over and we said, open the door, right? We want the door to be actually open. That's one command. <clears throat> For autonomous drones, you ask it to go deliver a package. It would drive over a whole bunch of things, try to avoid the other drones, maybe avoiding birds, and then you know, get to the location, drop off the package, comes back, right? That's a lot of action. That's a lot of decisions. Uh, and that is, sets it fundamentally different than the existing IoT-based attestation. So two, two key properties that uh, sets us apart. The first one is temporal behavior. The second one is attestation across the entire mission. Uh, as later on, it show, we'll show in the slide, uh, this actually brings up scalability challenge that we have. <clears throat> so this is just to recap. We call this a, a specific property the real-time mission execution integrity because we want it to be cover entire mission and it uh, covers the real-time aspect. We assume arbitrary code execution in the application as any other uh, remote attestation. Um, and our system goal is to provide the attestation for this particular property. <clears throat> and I, to highlight the challenge in the attack, uh, you can, we did a vanilla implementation, right? So we directly record and attest every single control flow event in the zone. Um, 
The original time is in red, so you can probably you probably can't see any of the red. Um, and the instrumentation is in yellow. The maximum execution time that is uh, uh, that is set of fourth in the control software. In other words, once you exceed that time, you're in big trouble because you'll be either falling from the sky or hitting into something. <clears throat> so as you can see, instrumentation alone um, caused, uh, caused the system to exceed their deadlines. <clears throat> and we dive into the reason why this is happening. Um, it turns out that because uh, most of the control, uh, control loops have very high frequency, so with the high frequency, you generate lots of events. And that's different than IoT, who's, you know, maybe in order to preserve battery, you only do it once in a while, right? For uh, autonomous CPS, it, it does it very frequently to maintain control performance. Um, so, and, and we also want to measure real-time behavior, right? So we want to measure the uh, timestamp for all the control flow events. You know, this, th those are additional overheads. So now in integrity measurement becomes availability attack. And I think this is the, probably the most important slide, um, uh, the, the key idea of the paper, right? In order to solve the challenge, the, the scalability challenge that we face, uh, our key idea is leverage compartmentalization, right? So once we have compartmentalization, we are able to attest high-level semantic events. And we are able to selectively say, you know, we're only going to care so much about this compartment because it's not control related. Therefore, you know, we're not going to measure control flow event, we're not, not going to measure any data flow events, right? But for the critical compartment, we can have stronger policies. And that compartmentalization is what enables individual, individualized policy for individual domains of the computer, of the program. Okay, hopefully that's uh, clear. And the rest is just execution, right? Um, so the system overview is you know, similar, it's, it's li literally a combination of attestation and compartmentalization. So um, given a policy uh, that we want to enforce, we first compartmentalize it based on the policy, then we uh, add instrumentation inside to enable the measurement uh, to verify those policies. And then at the end of the mission, we give it back to the verifier and the verifier verifies it. Uh, from the policy generation point of view, I suppose various level of policy customization. And uh, we use software instrumentation to do compartmentalization, which is different than existing literature. And the reason why we choose to do that is because we observe there are uh, huge diversities uh, in terms of hardware capabilities in CPS. And that, and they, that you know, in order for the solution to be generalized, we, uh, we choose software in, uh, for isolation, and it also has very small overhead. Because we're putting this on real-time systems, so we want the runtime overhead to be very, very small. Um, in addition to the control flow and um, the data flow events, we also measure the timing of the systems. And one of the key idea of verification in order to speed it up is that um, we recorded all the minimized events and then we replay it at the end, right? So we are recreating the execution event based on minimized recording on the control flow decisions. Uh, we, done, we did a whole bunch of experiments. Uh, I'm not gonna enumerate them. Uh, we, have, we, we built our own drone. We built a whole bunch of IoT devices in order to verify the idea. Um, the key takeaway, th this is the diagram on um, the execution time expansion. So the key takeaway is that um, even with those attestation and with the compartmentalization, we're able to maintain uh, the, we're able to minimize the runtime overhead such that it, it, it's within the um, deadline. Besides software real-time system, we also did a high real-time system. We also measure the scalability of the system. In other words, as you can imagine, the more things that you label critical, the more things that you, 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 uh, 
you measure and the higher the overhead is. So we start looking into the scalability of the system. Um, and as long as the number of compartments are less than 80, we're still okay, in, just in the case of Zhong, right? Um, in order to understand the usability of the system, uh, we also did a user study. Within the user study, um, we picked different people. Right? We picked people with different CPS expertise, different security expertise, different coding uh, uh, styles and comprehensions, uh, because those are all essential for writing the right defense for the attack. Um, without going into the detail, all the details are in the paper, but I want to highlight one thing is understanding the, uh, the attack mechanism is essential, right? Regardless what type of developer you are, regardless of your experiences, we find that you really need to know the attack well in order to write the policy. And, and that highlights one of the important limitations in future work of, our, um, of, of this direction is um, how to make the system practical enough, automated enough, such that you know, it enables domain expert, maybe not coding expert, to fully utilize the system. All right, um, I'm at 12 minute mark, so thank you very much. And this is our code, we have artifact batch. So someone vetted our code to say it's usable. Uh, please make use of it. <laughs>